Danny Johnson, what's been going on in the world of music with you? Well, I've been uh, waiting to do some Steppenwolf dates and um, producing some bands and uh, been touring, uh, uh, doing my solo thing up in Wisconsin and uh, excited about going out with Steppenwolf this year. So how many gigs are you going to be doing Steppenwolf again? Well, it's it's not a whole lot of dates this year. Um, we just do very selective big dates. When do you figure there'd be ever a new Steppenwolf album, if ever? If ever. Good question. That would be something John Kay could answer better than me. I would love to do a new Steppenwolf record. But uh, I don't know that that's going to happen. Is it that there's no material written? Um, we could make the material come together between the songs that I have and uh, stuff that John's working on. Ironically, I'm going to speak to John after we talk, and I will mention that you asked that question. It's a question I'm sure tons of Steppenwolf fans are always asking. They want a new album. Guaranteed. It's been a little while now, you know. It has been a while. Let's say for Steppenwolf, what type of equipment for amps do you use to modulate that tone from the 60s and early 70s? Well, a lot of times I use Marshalls, but um, I use Marshalls when I rent them. But um, I use processors. These things um, like a pod that simulate the amp sound you want. And in that Um, case, it makes it easier to travel and stuff also. Absolutely. For instance, we go to a third world country like uh, Mexico, South America, and they show up with some marshals, but you don't know when they change the tubes or the speakers. So just because something says marshal on it doesn't mean it sounds like a marshal. So I go into the back of the amp with my uh, processors, Behringer, which is a ripoff of a pod, and... Uh, I have my tones preset, so I just use the power amp of the Marshall and the, instead of the preamp. So if we go into Born to be Wild, my sound is preset. Magic Carpet Ride is preset with the sound of twin reverbs, which were the original amps. Pusher has a deep reverb, and so on and so on. And like this, it lets you uh, take extra time without doing sound checks because you guys aren't you guys are already modulating the sound, correct? Right, and sometimes we don't always get a chance to do sound check. We call it a firefight. Like if we're playing on the bill and it's a big festival and it's a bunch of bands from the 60s and the 70s, Hearts and Foreigner and Steppenwolf and so on and so on, you don't have a uh, chance to do a sound check. So the more you can kind of manipulate your sound without a sound check, the better. And with technology today, that is possible. Now, Danny, you you played on uh, Rod Stewart's Tonight I'm Yours. What did you do on that album? Well, I wrote a song in there called Jealous, and I played on the album. Um, I'm a very honest guy, and in in my opinion, uh, the... Rod Stewart album I played on was his worst album. I hope you can take my honesty. You replaced Steve Vai in Alcatraz. How did you get that job? Well, replacing Steve Vai was not an easy chore. I'm more of a uh, a blues rocker. Um, 60s, 70s. You know, I know my tricks and stuff like that. Um, Steve Vai was a very technical guitarist, and before Steve, it was Ingve, who was very gothic. So I had to learn a lot of that stuff. And um, my thing is, I'm a music guy. It's not how much guitar I play, it's how much guitar is needed. And in Alcatraz, a lot of people don't realize they had a great singer. And in my opinion... Ingve and Steve kind of, not really Steve, but uh, I remember Grand Bonnet saying that Ingve would do a guitar solo standing in front of him when he was singing, and there was no guitar solo supposed to be there. I would never do that, especially with John Kay. He would kick me in the ass, and that would be it. So, I, you know, it's kind of like success 
a guy once once explained to me is like knowing your place, like you're taking an airplane flight. Like my solo albums, maybe maybe I'm flying the plane, but when I'm with Steppenwolf, I'm riding in coach. John is in VIP. I have a lot of respect for John K. He's he's like a big brother, kind of like a father figure for the whole bunch of us, really. Um, John is an only child and really never knew his father because he died in, uh, I think, uh, when Hitler was doing his thing. John's dad was Russian, and he was killed before he was born. So John never really had a father. He had a stepfather, but he's very fatherly to us. That's my next phone call is uh, John's been calling to see how I'm doing, and um, very few band leaders would give a shit how their guys are doing. Let's face it, Steppenwolf is, you know, to me, John Kay is the main guy. I just can't express myself how wonderful of a guy he is and, you know, how helpful he's been to all of us. It's good to see a guy like him Sting does this, Bono does it. You know, they get older, they've made some money, and then they do good things back for the people. Like John has his own thing, I think it's called uh, Maud Kay, which is his current wife's name. Uh, Maud is her name before she got married. It's really to their mothers. Mod K. So they have their own thing where they build schools for people in Cambodia and they take care of sick animals that the circus doesn't want anymore. It's just great to see rockers, you know, and I always bring up Bono, who says he's overpaid, overfed, overdressed. Hmm. And, you know, so many rockers are just obsessed with themselves, you know. So John K. basically really respects his musicians. Yes. He looks after us. You know, he's calling me now to see how I'm doing, and we're playing phone tag. You're playing phone tag right now with John K.? Yeah. Can you talk to me about Special Forces Al Scooper? How long it take you to record that album? Well, uh, it took a while. He knew what he wanted. He likes the punky wild. He, he used to tell me, don't sit down and play. Stand up and turn your amp up as loud as it'll go and rock because my audience knows the difference. And in the studio, would you be sitting most of the time? And that's why he said to stand up, Danny Johnson? Well, in the studio, sometimes I sit. It's more of a studio musician thing, but he didn't allow that. And I thought that was cool. He wasn't finished with the record in time. So he went on tour and I, I would work on the record and we'd hold the phone up to the speakers at night to where he could hear it. He was very thankful to me that I finished the record when he was gone with the producer, Rick, Richie Podler. When is there going to be a new album with you appearing You know, on it? Have you been working on other people's projects? Uh, you mean a solo record? Solo record or, uh, you know, joining other people for certain uh, projects, anything like that? Well, I'm doing a band from Kentucky called Muddy Seed, and then I'm hoping to do another blues singer, and then I'm going to work on a solo album. Merritt Morgan is the blues singer I'm going to work on. Okay. She's really good. And um, I'm going to do some dates with the Wolf this year. Yeah, Merritt Morgan, this girl, she wants to call herself Baby Doll. And uh, she's from Arkansas. We've worked together off and on for many years. If we can pull this record off, it might be the best record I've ever recorded. This is going to be a great record then. Great record. We might call it uh, Raisin Cane. And we might even name a band called Raisin Cane. Danny's been a real pleasure talking to you finally. Well, you too. Um, thank you so much. You're welcome. You have a good one, man. All right? You too. Love you, man. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.